Singularity is a first-person shooter developed by Raven Software in 2010 and running on the Unreal 3 engine. It's a game that seemed to slip under a lot of people's radars, myself included. It takes a lot of elements from other shooting games like Stalker and Bioshock and throws in some original ideas of its own. What you're left with is a pulpy, gorgeously violent game that is enjoyable from start to finish. Set in 2010, you take on the role of a soldier named Renko, investigating a disturbance from an abandoned Soviet base. As Renko approaches the island, a massive surge of energy takes out his helicopter and he's stranded on the base. Before being transported back to 1955, around the time when the island was originally destroyed. It's at this time that he rescues a man from falling to his death before he's returned to an alternate 2010 to find that he's unintentionally rewritten history. Turns out this man known as Demichev is a real jerk and went on to take over the world. Renko then joins forces with a woman named Catherine and a scientist named Barisov to acquire something called the Time Manipulation Device, or TMD for short, which they plan to use to rewrite history and stop Demichev. Now I won't say anything else about the story, but I will say that most of the writing and the voice acting is pretty good overall. This whole time traveling idea is pretty much the central theme of the game and you're frequently jumping back and forth between 2010 and 1955, altering the present as you complete certain objectives. Initially the game is a pretty standard first person shooter with a mix of old school and modern shooting mechanics. You have a two weapon limit which you can switch out at any time, a fixed health bar, iron sights and a basic melee attack. Enemies consist of Spetsnaz soldiers patrolling the island and weird mutant-like creatures that are the result of the events that unfolded years prior. The soldiers are simple enough to deal with, whereas the mutants each have different tactics, though these are pretty easy to figure out. It's not too long before you get your hands on the TMD though and things become a little bit different. The TMD's most basic function is that it can alter certain items in the game world by either moving the item forward or backward through time. Quite a few of the game's puzzles require you to use the TMD to progress, and they're not always blatantly obvious. They do get frequently reused throughout the game, however, so it's easy to spot them as the game goes on. Aside from that, the TMD also has some pretty nifty combat abilities that you'll be getting some serious mileage on. Your melee attack is now replaced with a knockback effect that can practically vaporize anything in range. Aside from advancing time on inanimate objects, you can also use it on enemies, causing them to literally turn to dust as they age the span of countless years right before your eyes. That's awesome. You can also create a giant ball of energy called a deathlock that's going to stop time for anything that gets stuck in it. Lastly, you can pick up objects in the world and just throw them around, which is useful for climbing to certain out of the way areas or just launching the odd explosive barrel at someone's face. That's not to say that you'll be using the TMD and nothing else, in fact most of the weapons are genuinely great, fun to use and quite effective. As I said before, you can only carry two weapons at any one time, which seems to be forcing you to choose a playstyle. Though this doesn't seem to be too much of a hindrance, as the weapon you need for a certain area or encounter is often laying right on the ground just when you need it. Your basic arsenal is made up of a shotgun, pistol and an assault rifle before you get your hands on some more devastating firepower. The auto cannon is a higher powered minigun of sorts that will kill most enemies pretty damn easily and you even get to use a grenade launcher with controllable projectiles. My favourite however is the Seeker, an explosive sniper rifle that lets you guide each bullet towards its target in slow motion. Along with the TMD, all of these weapons can be upgraded so long as you've got the resources. The weapon upgrades require something called tech packs which you'll find throughout the game often in out of the way places. Whilst the TMD and various other upgrades require E99 tech, which you'll also find throughout the game, though this is much more abundant. You don't get enough resources to upgrade anything, but you don't really need to anyway. Even the basic shotgun and assault rifle are useful even at the end of the game, and kill almost everything much too easily. This is the same with the TMD power-ups. By about the halfway mark, I'd pretty much upgraded all of the weapons I needed, as well as all of Renko's basic stats like health and energy. And this is kind of the game's biggest fault, is that it's just too forgiving. Early on in the campaign you might be a bit stuck for health and ammo, but by the end of the game the entire thing is a cakewalk. The fully upgraded health bar is huge and you'll be stocked up on medkits almost the entire time. There's a few boss fights here and there, but these encounters feature blatant glowing weak spots that even the most dim-witted gamer would see a mile away. 
Some of the enemies you encounter later in the game can be a bit of a nuisance, but certain abilities like Deathlock, for instance, make them a pushover, as you can just freeze them in place and pump them full of bullets before they can even react. Another minor issue is with the Unreal 3 engine. I mean, it looks pretty good for the most part, and there's some really gorgeous looking atmospheric effects like thunderstorms, but it often has a bit of a problem with texture streaming. This is a problem that plagues a lot of Unreal 3 engine games, but thankfully it can usually be fixed by editing the configuration file. I really wish they had have explored the whole time traveling idea a bit more. Those moments when you're minding your own business and then get randomly transported back to 1955, surrounded by confused Soviet soldiers are the definite highlights and they needed more stuff like that. The only other thing I didn't like about this game was that it was too damn short. I think I finished it in about five or so hours. The last third of the game is literally non-stop balls to the wall action where you've really settled into your powers and upgraded your weapons of choice. At this point you're pretty much unstoppable and the game is just so much fucking fun that I'd run out of superlatives trying to explain how much I enjoyed it. I guess I just wished it went on a little bit longer. When I finished the story, all I wanted to do was start a new campaign all over again. I mean, another hour or two would have made this much better. Raven Software truly made some of the best games for the FPS genre, and Singularity is definitely up there in that regard. I can't think of a time in recent years where I just had such fun playing a game, where I could just sit back and pretty much enjoy the experience almost from start to finish. Yeah, I got a bit irritated early on when I got low on ammo or couldn't come to grips with the various controls for the TMD, but these annoyances quickly passed. Some people might be turned off by the more derivative mechanics in the game, like the iron sights and all that kind of stuff, but they're missing out on a truly awesome game over something so trivial. At the end of the day, I'd have no problems recommending this to anyone.